This is the card, this is the track, and this is actual footage of me going through a normal human-sized door. It's hard living like me. At the back of the grid, Austin Ladner, I grew up with him. Here is a photo to prove it. He's starting towards the back as car number 12. I am starting in P3 as car number two. Pretty cool to be in a race with a childhood friend like that. Half a second behind P1 at the moment, uh, but I think I can go faster than that. He did put in a solid lap, 51.5 is solid. I think the fastest I've seen all week is like a 50.8. So we're not quite on that level. Car number four looking to go around my outside as he gets a pretty decent launch. And I am following behind P1 and P2 directly ahead of me. Looking to go around the outside of car number three. And we go momentarily three wide before I absolutely just murder this guy. This was, there's nothing I can say that was totally on me. I went very deep there. Car number four, if you're watching this, I apologize for that. Thankfully, he was able to survive. He did lose a couple of positions, but it definitely could have been worse. I would classify that as attempted murder or a failed failed attempted murder. We are sitting pretty happily in P3 at the moment as we just kind of got rid of one of our main competitors and put him a few positions back. Falling behind, I believe his name is Leif Peterson? Le Leif? Leif Peterson? I'm not quite sure. Through the chicane, and uh, the three of us would find a nice little rhythm for quite some time. We've got Yeez and Yu behind us as well, which means that we're not totally free to just kind of run away with these guys. We do have to be conscious of the car behind. Uh, just really not make any glaring errors and by the time lap number five came around you had been replaced with car number four and a few seconds up the road is us so the top three did manage to pull away i imagine if i had not killed car number four he probably would have been pretty close behind us but uh, at this moment he was about four and a half seconds behind us this is lap number six by the way so we skipped ahead Quite a few laps as there wasn't really anything that happened in those first few. We're just kind of, we just kind of settled behind these guys and uh, drove away from the rest of the grid. This is a 13 lap race, by the way. So we're about halfway through at this point, six, six and a half laps. I guess we'd technically be halfway through. And uh, Francisco beginning to pull away in the in P1. He's sitting almost two seconds ahead at this point. And I feel like I was kind of sitting back a bit for car number three for quite some time coming through the chicane though boom very hard to tell there but he just gets i mean probably within an inch of not being off track there he's gonna hit the brakes going into turn seven so we move ahead of him after six laps into p2 and for whatever reason seeing this guy ahead of me now with nobody else ahead of me like like just a second ago when i was in p3 i was like okay we'll ride this out and see how it goes but all of a sudden now I'm like, this could be a win, even though that should have been my attitude before. It's just now hitting me two seconds behind Francisco. Nobody between us. Still got half of the lap race, so a lot of time to make it up. But uh, I had a few things that I definitely needed to do, namely fix the way that I was taking the final corner of this track. Because every single time I came through here, you can see me shift down to second gear here. I think what I was doing was I was relying on the on shifting to get rotation and... I was kind of over slowing my car to get down that low in revs and as the race went on I began experimenting with uh, different ways of taking that final corner at this point this is lap number nine still 2.1 seconds behind Francisco so we really have not gotten any closer to him whatsoever uh, I've kind of been tweaking my lines a little bit as this was still a race that happened pretty early in the week so I wasn't settled into like an exact lap for me to take every single time I was still learning still experimenting Mainly with the end of this track, the final sector, I think that this is where there's a lot of time to be gained that isn't quite as obvious. You know, the chicanes, obviously there's time to be gained there. But this exit coming up, if you watch the uh, relative here, we're already starting to close the gap with a good exit through that final chicane. But this corner right here, I find to be crucial. If you can get the car turned around quick enough and the way the camera kind of rolls out of this corner is very strange. Uh, I don't push all the way to the left side because I like to have an easier exit or an easier run through that chicane that we just went through. You can see we're down to 1.7 seconds at this point. Going to stay in third gear this time. It feels slow. Just really try and get the car turned with the brakes and minimal steering and really just try and keep your minimum speed as high as possible as opposed to going in hot, getting it turned, and then darting out. Crossing the line for the fastest lap of the race at 151.7. And that was about three tenths faster than his lap, so I decided to run with exactly the way that I was taking those corners for the rest of this race. Skip ahead to lap number 11. We've gained two tenths on him. We're just not executing well, in all honesty. Our pace, 
I believe our pace was there if we were to execute a lap well, but we were having little moments here and there, not able to create as big of an advantage for ourselves as we should have had. However, turn number 12, it's about to unravel for him. He goes super deep through there and somehow still manages to kind of mess up his exit going way, way wide on the left side there. That's going to make his run through the chicane a bit harder for himself. He actually gains time from carrying more speed into turn 12, but having to gather it up and find a good exit, he ends up losing speed and carrying less speed through that chicane. We are closing on him all of the way through the final corner, just about in slipstream range at this point. We've got him at 1.3 seconds ahead of ourselves. I say slipstream probably really starts to kick in at around a second to 0.9 seconds. That's where you really feel it the most. You only have a couple of laps left as well. This is actually the penultimate lap, lap number 12, 1.2 seconds. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I mean, I was two seconds behind him six laps ago. So I'm struggling to close the gap here. I'm still kind of relying on him helping me out with that in some way. If he even could cut a chicane like the guy who gave us P2 did, that would be fantastic. I don't know what the chances of that really would be. Approaching the chicane that that guy cut and P1 is actually going to cut the first part of the chicane by, I have no idea how much, an extremely small amount. And coming out of the chicane, he's going to just not get on the throttle. Boom, baby, serving that penalty. We move up the inside into turn seven again. So taking the lead from him on the penultimate lap, we have a lap and a half to go. He's right on our tail though. So that's kind of an issue because the straight on this on this track is extremely long so unless you're able to really shape them past about four tenths which he's sitting at right now then they're probably going to have an attempt or they're going to have the opportunity to dive bomb you into turn one however we are heading towards the final lap so he only has one more chance if i can just have a good sector here maybe a good turn 12 it seems like that's where he made a mistake on the last lap really hoping for that coming towards turn 12 the complete opposite is about to happen as i dive super deep there really fucking up my brakes hopping on board with him he's closed up right behind us he does hesitate onto throttle um to give us i mean i guess to avoid the opportunity for us to clash which loses him a crucial amount of momentum he's still really close to us three tenths but he definitely could have been directly on our tail thankful for that uh i mean he was he was taking precautions there i probably would have done the same thing but at some point you know you just kind of got to get that out of your head and really ship it when you're that close to somebody especially following on to the final lap we get a good run out of that final corner as well so we're it's kind of dipping left and right to help keep him out of slipstream but uh it's not really going to do all that much we did have him at four tenths by the time we left that final corner and i think we had a better run than him as well so he shouldn't really be able to do anything here and he's not going to be close enough by the time turn number one comes around hopping on board with him all i gotta do all i gotta do is just drive a solid lap here not cut any chicanes not do the same thing that both of these guys behind me have done and i should be able to secure this and uh, finally come across for a win it's been it's been a I mean, my wins are very few and far between. Coming up to the chicane where they both cut it, I'm going to be extra careful here, make sure that my outside tire is not touching that sausage curb, keep it on the track, have to fight the car a little bit. My tires were not super happy with me at this point. Coming into turn seven, this is an opportunity. I've seen people make this dive up the inside. He kind of teases it, uh, perhaps looking to make me make a mistake. However, I am not shaking right now. I have only had one off track this entire race, actually, uh, plus that uh, incident from, from lap one turn one where I absolutely murdered car number four. Somehow that wasn't an off track, believe it or not. Heading towards the end of this lap, just about wrapped it up. We've got him three tenths behind us. He should not be able to slingshot past us before we get to the finish line. The run to the finish is not that long, so there's not really opportunity for anybody to make a pass there. Just got to hold it tight here. Disallow any opportunity for him to sneak up the inside or I think he's probably looking for a better exit. I actually saw the relative kind of expand as we entered that corner. He's probably looking to get a better run out of there, but he's not going to be close enough as we barrel towards the final corner. Four tenths behind us, and uh, we should be able to secure this one. Just a clean drive around here. Don't spin the car. We actually missed the apex a little bit, but it's okay. Better safe than sorry. Sometimes it's honestly worth it to kind of shave a tenth off of your own time going around the final corner just to make sure you don't do anything stupid. And we are going to cross the line for a win, baby. It's been a long time. It feels really freaking good. And uh, one that Austin was actually in, my friend Austin from the beginning, which was a ton of fun to race with him at all, but even cooler to be able to get a win with him in the lobby with me. And I actually want to look at his race real quick because I told him that I would. So he's starting in P15 as car number 12, spins his tires once, spins his tires twice, and everybody pulls away from him except for car number 15 who is behind him. 
and I'm not going to sugarcoat his race. It was uh, not great. I think he cut that chicane right there, which was the same one that P2, or excuse me, P1 cut later on in the race. So he serves a penalty on the first lap. Uh, this guy ends up driving off. Somebody reappears next to him. This is just the kind of shit that you see in the middle to the back of the field in these races a lot of the times. Especially in uh, this week, there wasn't that many people racing. There goes Austin. So picking up a position there. And um, coming around lap two, turn number one, he's just not really going to break. Kind of do what I did on lap one, except there's nobody there to stop him and help him break. Somebody else was actually off the track, so he makes an overtake with that line. Fantastic, fantastic stuff there. I don't see somebody make an overtake with that type of line all that often. Car number 15 then was actually, this was just kind of funny, something I wanted to show. This is like lap four, I think, and car number 15 is spamming in the chat to go around to the left of him. Car number seven, who by some way has gotten behind him, just runs into the back of him in the middle of the track, too. There was space actually on the outside for car number seven to go around there. I'm not sure. Uh, what that was but that's what it was final lap came around and austin and the i think that's car number 11 behind him just kind of ended up on an island by themselves he's sitting in p9 and he would end up finishing there so good race to him as car number 12 finishing in p9 great stuff here are the results it was a dub baby as you saw previously i'm gonna say it again they're they're few and far between for me gained eye rating gained safety rating overall super enjoyable race not a lot of mistakes there there's austin in p9 shout out to austin and uh let's get into the next one so next race you may recognize this sexy car that's joey starting in p1 meanwhile we are starting in p4 behind a friend of the channel brock feeney here you see him all the time v8 australian supercar driver super fast driver amazing driver um super fun to drive with too so i was looking forward to this race and starting right behind him would have been cool but uh I, I mean i guess i did start behind him however one two people going up my inside as i have a terrible launch make that three people car number five going up the inside of car number 11 make that four people car number eight is now on the inside of us and uh, we're right behind car number 11 taking a bit slow through the first corner don't want to kill anybody don't want to get killed and uh, we're going side by side with actually not even car number eight car number eight has pulled ahead of us now so car number seven is now on our outside and he's going to pass us through the first chicane so make that five positions down uh in the first couple of corners a really really atrocious start Flashing back to turn number one there, you can see Joey was in the lead. However, heading into turn number one, some pretty unfortunate events would go down for him. Jay Wong around the outside makes contact with him, slows him down. Brock Feeney sneaks past both of them up into the lead, and Joey has to settle behind Jay there. So going down to P3, however, he's directly on their tail. Jay is extremely fast. Joey is extremely fast. Th that fight is not over. So flashing now to where we just were, got passed by a car number seven through that last chicane. However, the very next chicane, we're going to send it around the outside on entry, try and dart through to the exit as quickly as we can, maintain side by side with them. Here's an outside perspective of this. I was so proud with this move that going through the chicane like that feels fucking amazing with somebody. Now heading into turn seven, we're on the inside. This is a bit dangerous to do. You really don't want to go side by side through here. He goes very deep and we end up kind of settling behind him. We make a little bit of contact. It was a zero times, don't worry. Uh, so nobody got hurt there. We did lose a little bit of time, however, to Calvin in P7, about a second. It would start to close up pretty quickly though, as I mean, you can see just how congested the field still is. Basically all of the way up to P1 is like, I don't know, maybe three or four seconds up the road. We're pretty damn close still. And um, Joseph Hernandez, pretty fast driver ahead of us. Calvin, very fast, directly ahead of him. So we should be able to at least climb forward, like as a group, I'm hoping at least. It would be awesome if I didn't lose five positions on start. That would be really nice. But sometimes it happens like that. And sometimes you get freebies, like mad freebies. And coming around the final corner of the first lap, explain this, atheists. Explain that to me. I'm going to church this Sunday, to be honest. I'm going to church. He goes off as well, which didn't have anything to do with me or affect me. But seeing three cars spin off in sync like that has... I don't know if I've actually ever seen that before. So that was crazy to see. I was just like in amazement. That moves me all the way back up to P6. So I kind of netted uh, negative two positions on the first lap, which isn't that bad considering I was five down by turn two not even a full lap ago we do have quite a bit of time ahead of us so daniel is 1.9 seconds ahead of us by the time lap number five came around by the grace of god this group kind of stuck together you can see just how close everybody is up there and we slowly made our way towards these guys running high 51s which 
seemed to be pretty good pace for uh, the open setup, which is what this was. Jay Wong making a move up the inside of Brock Feeney. First move to challenge Brock ever since turn two of the first lap. Brock holding him ridiculously tight, not letting Jay open up the corner. Jay opens it up anyway, kind of ends up spinning himself. I mean, looking at it from Joey's perspective, Brock was there, there was space on the inside for Jay. You typically don't even drive that far out when you're on the racing line. Joey was able to scoop both of those positions though. I end up scooping the position from Jay who went into the wall. So I'm now up into P4. Joey is back in his rightful place of P1 with Brock behind him. So I expect there to be some fighting there. Brock will send a move whenever it is opportune. Like anytime something shows up, he goes for it. He's an IRL driver. This guy does this for fun. He is on the sim to fight people and, you know, try and make crazy moves happen. Joey just about losing grip going up turn nine, I think that is, eight or nine, something like that, manages to hold it. It does lose a little bit of time to him. Nothing major. I think Brock was in the slipstream anyway, so it didn't really affect him that much. Great save, though. That could have been the end of his race. And, I mean, yeah, shout out to that save. Drifting that corner is not an easy thing to do, especially catching it and not losing that much time. It's, it's a, actually really really difficult thing to do. Now, we are behind Daniel right now and Andrew. Both of them pretty fast drivers. Shout out to Andrew. He was actually in the Twitch chat. And speaking of Twitch, this is a new sticker that has been added to my car by Ace Spitty, my freaking boy. If you want to add a sticker to my car, follow me on Twitch and uh, you can do it with channel points there. Now, back to the race. Absolutely glorious view here. Five cars within, I don't know, two and a half seconds of each other. For the lead of the race at lap six, we're at the back, my favorite place to be in, in groups like this. You get to watch everything go down. You have time to react. No pressure from behind. So all of your attention is focused on moving forward. And it's just, it's hard to describe like how enjoyable it is. It makes me, it gives me like big Z from Surf's Up vibes being in this position. Cause it's just like, you're in this moment of bliss where it's like being in the tube of the wave. And I hear that music from the fucking, from the movie really ah yeah better than winning the trophy all that stuff tube riding is is the ultimate ultimate thing in surfing to ride inside the wave and and make it out of it it's all we want to do every day oh it's it's almost impossible to describe whatever it's awesome if you've never been in a situation like this keep racing eventually you'll get in one and you'll understand by the end of that lap everybody's still hot on each other's tails we're still at the end kind of just running pumping out this lap uh, with daniel and andrew that's going to change though coming through the final corner andrew goes takes a really early apex goes super deep you can treat this as a double apex but you cannot let your car drift wide through that exit which he does that gives daniel a really good run andrew's trying to kind of rejoin the track and I just fucking stare straight ahead. Just about that. I got super lucky. I didn't even try and move my car over. I definitely should have. And you can see here, Andrew going super deep there, right? He should be much closer to the inside of the track there. Daniel gets a really good run. And then Daniel kind of does this thing. Some people do where it's like, oh, you're over the white line, so I'm not going to move. It's better for everybody if you just move and let that guy back on the track. They both die. We move up to P3 by doing nothing. I mean, we went down five positions at the start, literally have done nothing since then, and we're back into P3. So uh, down five and then back up five without anything. It's, it's been a very, uh, a very fortunate race for me. One second behind Brock, who's in P2, one and a half seconds behind Joey. I have a little bit of catching up to do, but it shouldn't be all that much of a problem we have a lot of time behind us as well jay wong three seconds behind us i'm pretty sure he had some damage from that incident that him and brock got into so i don't think he was driving at full pace now this is a good example of just how strong the slipstream is when you get within half a second as well as getting a good run you can see right now i mean he started that that uh straight half of a second behind joey and already he's closed it to about two tenths at this point super close to him actually kind of baiting a move up the inside uh, i'm not sure if he's actually looking for a move joey just kind of drives wide there ends up going side by side with brock momentarily and you know brock will try and go around the outside here i, I think he does but just goes a little bit too deep loses some speed joey kind of cuts in early as well neither of them taking the optimal line and that is going to put us i mean we just gained half of a second on both of them through that corner so it, it shows how little little moments of fighting can make such a big difference especially when somebody you know from behind is just driving like a solid lap that time adds up really really quick and the margins are so fine in this series and uh, at this level as well joey and brock are like top drivers just about i mean they're, they're not 
well, Brock is literally a pro, but uh, Joey has been absolutely phenomenal, especially as of late. Some crazy, consistently, consistently fantastic results, putting himself on the podium or winning the race just about every single race at this point. Now, um, we are in the perfect spot to chase Brock down, four tenths behind him. We talked about this last race, that's kind of that range you want to be in to attempt to make a move into turn one of the upcoming lap. However, he does still have the slipstream from Joey, so I have to take that into account that I won't have that major speed difference to him. Brock and myself will probably be on similar speeds, and both of us will have a pretty big speed difference to Joey. So Joey really needs to get a good exit through this final corner. It's pretty important for him at this point, and he's honestly not going to be too reliant on that right now as Brock kind of messes up his line through there. So Brock drops a little bit of time, about a tenth to us. He ends up getting a better exit than us because of that late apex that I assume he involuntarily took there. I mean, it's not the optimal way to go through that corner, but it does get you a good exit. You sacrifice some big corner, uh, big corner time there. Now we're closing up on Joey. We've got him three tenths ahead of, or six tenths ahead of us, and less than half of a second behind or ahead of Brock. And I, that is a difficult job to be running away from Brock Feeney in the lead of the race with uh, four laps left to go. So it, this race is not over yet. There is quite a bit of time left. Uh, five laps, actually, I guess, including this including this lap, there's five laps left. He does have the clean air, which is pretty nice, especially through corners such as the chicanes, through these kind of tight and twisty corners. He gets a little bit of a slide exiting through the second chicane, and we do the exact same thing, like to the T, we did the exact same slide as him, which isn't going to affect either of us that much. I mean, Brock is still directly in the middle of us. My worst corner, turn number seven right there, that downhill left-hander, and you'll kind of see both of them pull away on just about every lap by about a tenth right there, and then I kind of fight to gain that tenth back through the final few corners of this track, which I think were my favorite and I was the most confident in, including the chicane and then turn 12, which is the hairpin right after. Brock going very deep into the entrance of the chicane, and his exit is going to suffer substantially from that, so we now find ourselves right on his tail. Joey is beginning to pull away from us. He's almost a second, so he's had a very, very clean lap. Uh, if he could continue that, we may be able to soak up so much slipstream from Brock from being this close, and with him having the lack of slipstream to Joey, that we have big enough of the speed difference to possibly make a move work. Now, Joey isn't going to like my decision making here. Coming through the final corner, we get a super good run. Brock going slightly deep on entry. By this point, my exits had become super consistent through this final quarter. I was very confident that I would be able to maintain this gap to him. One tenth, we are definitely going to have enough speed to attempt to move here. However, I'm not focused on P2. <laughs> I'm focused on Joey, so I'm going to push Brock, actually. Joey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. I then kind of tease a move to the inside to try and play mind games with him. Really end up absolutely shafting myself as I go extremely deep through the first corner. Don't really lose... I mean, any time. We're still kind of in the same place we were. As long as we're within a second to Joey, Brock should have slipped to Joey, which means that we will always be within a shout of the wind. And uh, sure enough, here we are later on that lap, heading up the hill and same positions for everybody, basically. Joey is doing really well to pull away from us in the infield, though, using that clean air to the maximum of his advantage. Through the chicane, Brock having a much better run than the last lap, which will probably keep him safe through that final corner as long as he gets a good run through corner number 12 coming up here. He's been super solid here all race. I'm expecting the same thing here from him. And it actually looks like Joey goes a bit deep. You do want to treat that as a double apex, but you kind of want to have that second apex be slightly earlier than you might think. Uh, otherwise, you end up just kind of losing time through the mid corner there. And by the time we cross the final corner, Brock going deep here. I mean, he's definitely getting a bit antsy as Joey is half a second ahead of him. We get a super good run once again now, so we are 0.1 second behind Brock, who finds himself in an Oreo cookie sandwich car, cookie sandwich between two pole racing cars. This won't be the last time you see this, I promise. Now he's pretty close to Joey, about a tenth to Joey on the outside. Joey's on the inside. I, I'm speechless. I Look at this. What the f What? The f me and Joey both were just like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, when that when that happened live, I mean, you can't say anything about that. That was absolutely beautiful. Joey would have had 
I, he would have had to like, I, I, I don't even know. We, we sneak a move on Joey there, but I mean, honestly, I wasn't ever gonna go for that. I was just like, still processing that move. He, oh, God, bless America. That's a pro driver move. That's a pro dri driver move. Go back and watch it again. Go back and watch it like 10 times if you want. I'm gonna put a chapter just for that move so you can just skip back to it. We are on turn 12, lap 11. Joey not getting the greatest run. Brock has pulled away by about half of a second from Joey. We're hot on his tail at this point. And uh, with a decent run, which we've been able to consistently secure through this final corner, we should be looking at a move here. However, Brock goes extremely deep there, losing time all of the way through that mid corner, slightly sacrificing his exit as well as it was that deep of a uh, of a line through there. And it's going to give Joey a decent amount of slipstream from him now, kind of close that gap up by a couple of tenths as we go on to the straight. Lap number 12, deep and ultimate lap. Joey is closing up to Brock. He's about two tenths at the moment, looking up the inside, and he is going to fire back, trying to find the space on the inside. Brock holding extremely tight and... The angle just quite wasn't quite there for Joey. They make very small net code and it just absolutely ships Joey around to the side. Seems like a little bit of an unrealistic uh, hit there. Jay Wong gets through there safely as well. We move up into P2, chasing down Brock. We've got him six tenths ahead of us. We have an opportunity once again for another win. We have one lap to go after this one. I'm really just focusing on trying to get as close to him as possible through the rest of this lap and going to attempt to execute a move into turn one just as Joey did is my plan at the moment. Coming through the chicane, we have just a few corners left, still have about half of a second ahead of us. We need to be a little bit closer for something to work here. A good run through turn 12 could give it to us or, I mean, honestly, he hasn't been super consistent through that final corner. That could make a big difference for us. He does go a bit deep through turn 12 and I think we actually gain a bit of time there to him. I'm imagining that he was really focusing on getting a good exit there, but uh, he ended up sacrificing some some time on entry to achieve that exit. Now, heading towards the final corner could be huge for us. It looks like he's completely with the apex again. We're staying just close enough. You don't want to be touching that curve, but you don't want to be as far off as he was. And we definitely had a better run through there. Three tenths behind him, heading towards the final lap. We could have an opportunity here to make something happen. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. We're two tenths behind him now, soaking up that slipstream. I've got the move in my head to pull to the inside, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, I, I definitely could have shipped it there. It it would have been my best, my best chance by far if I could have got ahead of him there or even just side by side with him there. However, I'm looking for a good exit out of the chicane. Not quite going to get it. Definitely going a bit deep for that exit. It could have been a good opportunity for me there. I just broke slightly late and not quite enough, so I missed that second apex through that first chicane. We're still really close to him, though, but turn seven is coming up. This is not my corner. I've said it. Uh, you've seen it, and you're about to see it again. Coming through here, starting at about a tenth behind him. And by the time we exit, he's gained about two tenths. It's definitely not over. There's still a few opportunities for us here, trying to get on the throttle earlier than him here and maintain that slightly higher speed all of the way up the hill. We just about do. We actually turn in a little early there, have to hesitate onto the throttle, and that gives him his advantage right back, or kind of evens the advantage out, cutting a lot more of that entry to the chicane, and overall through the chicane, I think I was faster uh, over the course of the entire race. Chasing him down here, heavily in the slip, heading towards turn 12, trying to open it up more. Uh, not quite able to keep my car as close to him as I would have liked, as I could have. I could have been much closer to him there. I think I got on my brakes a little bit stronger than I needed to to avoid the or the chance of hitting him, even though that probably wouldn't have happened. But we're going to fucking look at the inside. Just kidding. We're not doing that. Uh, we look to open up this corner super deep, get a really late apex, and try and build throttle early, but it just doesn't really happen here. I try that. It's like a Hail Mary, and it, it never really works. Uh, sure enough, once again, it's not going to work, and I just just threw away my opportunity for a win so I crossed the line in p2 and still a very fun race I mean we went down five up six which is cool but could have been better uh, could have been worse though so 
It, it is what it is. Great driving from Rock, Jay, and Joey. Everybody at the front. That was just insane. We crossed the line in P2. There we are. Jay behind us in uh, P3, and Joey secures P4. Gaining I rating, losing safety rating. Who cares about safety rating? Not me. Taking a look at the laps, and we actually had the fastest lap of the race. It was a super hot session. Nobody was going all that fast, and we were really the only people with enough space and slipstream to put in a lap like that this race. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my channel and uh, some other videos. It helps me out a ton.